Eco-extremist Stephen Gilbo is back with another wild scheme that will make your head spin. After getting schooled in court over his plastics band blunder, Gilbo has schemed up something even more diabolical, a national plastic registry to creepily track every piece of plastic businesses make. This massive government mess will force companies into plastic paperwork hell, diverting huge time and money away from actual production and innovation. And for what planet-saving benefit? Nothing. It's just more virtue signaling red tape that will suck millions from our struggling economy. Canadian companies are sounding alarms, but the government isn't listening, obsessed with pleasing the UN instead of citizens. Who cares how many Canadian jobs circle the drain? From electric vehicles to plastics and beyond, Hilbo keeps doubling down on unrealistic policies that punish industry instead of supporting practical solutions. He caters only to activists, not the real needs of hardworking Canadians. Yilbo and his partner in eco-crime Trudeau care more about pleasing their UN masters than protecting Canadian jobs. Their heavy-handed environmental rules are like a one-two punch to the gut, wrecking our economy while doing nothing for the planet. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Before we jump into today's video, take a second to sign up for our exclusive uncensored newsletter. The mainstream media won't report Trudeau's scandals and corruption, but our newsletter delivers the raw truth to your inbox daily. We'll leave you the link in the description box. Now let's dive into today's crazy developments. After environment extremist minister Stephen Gilbo's bid to ban single-use plastics failed, he's back with another crazy idea to ramp up government grip on businesses and slap a fat bill on the economy, all in the name of fighting plastic pollution. Gilbo's latest folly is a new national plastic registry that will force companies across Canada to report in detail on every bit of plastic they produce or import. This top-down big government mess will drown businesses in paperwork without really doing squat to save the planet. Today's Earth Day, which is this year's team, Planet vs. Plastic, calling on us for an ambitious change by 2040. Canada's working hard to walk the walk on plastic waste reduction. We helped to launch the Ocean Plastic Charter during Canada's 2018 G7 presidency. We introduced a domestic ban on harmful single-use plastics. We're implementing a comprehensive plan to reduce plastic waste and pollution. And today, I'm excited to announce a new federal plastic registry, which will increase transparency and help make producers responsible. The registry will require plastic producers to take more responsibility for the plastic they put on the market. Every year from now on, they must declare the quantity and types of plastic they supply, how these plastics move through the economy, and how they are managed at the end of their life. The Trudeau Liberals claim their plastic registry will increase transparency and help the government track plastic waste. But in reality, it is just another burdensome regulation that will cost the industry millions of dollars to comply with. Businesses will have to count every plastic bottle, bag, straw, cup, and other item they make or bring into Canada, document how these plastics move through the economy, and file reports annually to the federal government. This is paperwork for paperwork's sake, pulling resources away from actual production and innovation. And for what environmental benefit? The registry will not directly reduce plastic waste at all. It is merely a tracking system. The assumption seems to be that embarrassing companies over how much plastic they use will somehow shame them into changes. But more likely, businesses will simply pass on the compliance costs to consumers through higher prices or exit the Canadian market altogether. Minister Gilbo asserts the plastic registry will compel companies to take responsibility for plastic pollution. This shows the registrar's true purpose, not as an informational tool, but as a blunt weapon to force behavior change through government mandate. Industry groups in Canada have been sounding the alarm bells about this whole deal. They're saying that these registries need to have some sort of standard metrics and terms, but guess what? Those don't even exist yet for plastics. So we're talking a bunch of years just to get the standards sorted out, which means more waiting around and more cash flushed down the drain. Plus, there's the whole issue of spilling the beans on trade secrets to the competition. But you know what? The Trudeau crew is not listening. They're charging ahead like there's no tomorrow, not even bothering to check how much this will mess with the economy first. It's like they're wearing blinders, ignoring all the evidence and gripes from businesses. And this isn't the first rodeo either. Seems like Gilbo and Trudeau are on a mission to stick it to certain industries just to keep the green activist happy. Gilbo continues to double down on unrealistic policies that punish industry instead of supporting practical solutions. His comments at the recent UN Plastics Summit provide more evidence of this misguided approach. Regarding a proposed international plastics treaty, Gilbo asserts there is almost a consensus that a treaty must address all stages of plastic production and use.
I think there is broad agreement. I would I would venture to say almost a consensus amongst all of the countries that are here that the this international agreement to phase out plastic pollution by 2040 that we're trying to agree upon by the end of the year would have to look at the various stages of plastic production and their impact on the environment and find solution for each of those uh, steps of the, of the plastic production chain. But industry groups have warned against overly prescriptive global rules. Each region and sector requires flexibility to find the most efficient solutions. A binding treaty dictating rigid phase-outs of broad categories of plastics as Gilbo desires will backfire. It will advantage countries with lax regulations over responsible North American industries. Jobs and economic activity will simply move overseas to major plastic producers like China. Gilbo further claims pretty much everyone outside the Conservative Party agrees more must be done about plastics. His partisan jab ignores the many industry groups who want reasonable policies developed cooperatively, not top-down government bans and edicts. The same dynamic of denying reality and pushing ahead with what he thinks is best for the environment, even if it's not great for the economy, applies to electric vehicles. Gilbo denies seeing declining EV demand in Canada. He insists adoption is still rapid and targets will be met. But this wishful thinking contradicts automakers themselves warning of slowing sales. Gilbo essentially argues government regulations will force companies to supply EVs, which will then stimulate consumer demand. He has an unfounded faith in central planning and coercion over market realities. Well, two things I'd like to say. Uh, I heard one of your speakers uh, say that uh, we were more ambitious than, than the U.S. on that. Uh, that's not exactly true. In the first few years of the, the implementation of our regulations, we are actually catching up to more ambitious U.S. regulations. By 2035, we should be roughly on par with where the Americans want to be with their own regulations on electric, on electric vehicles. Um, and I, I mean, what we're seeing is is not a, a decline in, in the sales of, uh, of of electric vehicles, but in in decline in the speed of adoption of of electric vehicles. We've seen globally, and and that's certainly been the case in Canada, a very very rapid adoption of of electric vehicles. A um, few years ago, about two and a half years ago, it was about three percent of sales in Canada. It's now more than ten percent of sales overall nationally. Twenty percent of Quebec, so one out of five vehicles sold in Quebec is an electric vehicle, one in four in, in, in British Columbia. So we are, sti we are still seeing rapid adoption of, uh, of electric vehicles because as price of oil goes up and price of gasoline, like we've seen recently uh, in, in Ontario and Quebec, uh, more and more people want to want to li liberate themselves from that dependencies that dependency on on oil companies uh, and, and 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 gasoline the price of electricity is much more stable much cheaper than uh, than, than than gasoline and our our assessment and the assessment of agencies like the international energy agency is that as time goes by, more and more people will be going towards electric vehicle. I, I, the question is, how fast will they move to, to, towards EVs? But companies understand their customers and capabilities better than politicians. They are delaying EV investments because infrastructure is lacking and most buyers still prefer cheaper gas models. Gilbo remains unwilling to adjust targets based on real-world conditions. He claims more models and falling prices will ignite EV sales as regulations tighten. But this puts the cart before the horse. We can't force consumer behavior with government mandates. We need improvements in public charging infrastructure, battery technology, and other innovations to make EVs widely appealing first. Only then will mandates and bans be effective without hurting the industry. The minister talks a big game about being practical, but when push comes to shove, he's about as flexible as a brick. He's quick to brush off any evidence or feedback that doesn't fit his own beliefs. This whole my way or the highway attitude might make the activists happy, but it's just going to slow down environmental progress in the long run. All they're focused on is pleasing their masters at the UN, acting like a bunch of UN puppets selling their souls to the organization. Gilbo himself admitted that wiping out plastic pollution is pretty much mission impossible. Yet, here they are, wasting a ton of time and resources trying to negotiate some grand international deal. Let's recall that Canada's domestic plastics ban has already proven unworkable. A federal court ruled the government overreached in deeming all plastics toxic when that broad categorization is scientifically unfounded. The judge rightly recognized that plastics have many different chemical makeups and uses. An arbitrary blanket ban was an absurd oversimplification. But the minister remains stubbornly committed to this flawed regulatory overreach. Gilbo said recently that pretty much everyone agrees more must be done to curb plastics except the Conservative Party of Canada. 
the industry is on board, scientists are on board, the vast majority of, of governments are on board. So, frankly, uh, besides the, the Conservative Party of Canada, who said that if they were in power, they would ban, they would cancel um, this, meet, this UN meeting to fight plastic pollution. But beside the Conservative Party of Canada, pretty much everyone is on board with the fact that we need to do this and the time to do it is now. This claim is false. Responsible industry groups want to address plastic waste through cooperation and market-driven innovation, not coercive regulations and bans. The same dynamic will play out with the plastic registry. Industry will be vilified as anti-environment for resisting an onerous, ineffective, and costly new tracking scheme. New ones and evidence will be ignored in favor of virtue-signaling politics. Gilbo thinks he's some kind of down-to-earth environmental dude, but his moves scream anti-business and anti-market. The planned plastic registry is just another one of those policies that make a big show of caring about the environment, but end up smacking industry in the face. Treating businesses like they're the villains won't do jack for our already struggling economy, especially after the disaster of budget the Liberals just rolled out. It's not going to help the economy or Canadians dealing with rising prices. Instead of giving businesses a leg up and getting the economy back on track, Trudeau and his eco-buddy are busy pandering to the UN bigwigs with their latest brainstorm. And you know what? It's going to drive even more companies and jobs out of Canada, all while doing next to nothing to clean up the environment. Trudeau and his pal Gil Bo are obviously more focused on pleasing the UN bigwigs than on protecting Canadian jobs. And their national plastic registry scheme just proves it. Instead of letting companies innovate, they want to drown them in paperwork, tracking every bit of plastic. All to chase their dream of getting rid of plastic and making the activists happy. But forget about the breakthroughs Canadian researchers are making. Trudeau doesn't seem to care. He'd rather bow down to the UN and slap on more rules for businesses. Who cares about the good manufacturing jobs that'll be lost? Not Gilbo and his eco-squad. They're fine with production moving to China. Sure, the environment suffers, but at least Canada can feel noble. Enough is enough. Trudeau and Gilbo need to stop trampling on our economic freedom. Canadian workers and businesses will be left holding the bag with their plastic crackdowns. Instead of working with businesses, these liberal bosses see them as the bad guys. They're answering only to international bigwigs, not us regular folks. Canadians deserve leaders who look out for us, not ones who wreck jobs for pie-in-the-sky ideas. Trudeau and Gilbo are selling Canada out, one crazy policy at a time. We need to stop this plastic registry before we lose countless jobs. These greedy policies only benefit power-hungry politicians and the global elite. We need to vote them out. Well, that's all for now. How many more Canadian jobs will Trudeau and Gilbo destroy to satisfy the UN's radical green agenda? When will Trudeau stop putting radical ideology over practical policies that benefit Canadians? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also follow us on Twitter, where we post stuff we can't post on YouTube. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I will see you in the next one.